Living and Dying with the King James Bible. I was risking a lot by writing this book. There's so many Christians today who were raised reading the King James Bible. There's even church leaders who that's the only Bible they've considered reliable. And I'm daring to challenge that. Now, when I do this, I'm not trying to offend Christians. I'm not trying to get them to discard the King James Bible. I right out want to tell you the King James Bible is a gift of God. Uh, in 1611, when King James commissioned it to, to be developed, it became the standard of Protestant Christianity. It has become the standard, and it stabilized Christianity for 400 years. God has used it. God has spoken to millions of Christians through it. The King James Bible says it's a gift of God. However, today there are a lot of modern translations. Should we be using them or not? That's the issue that we're addressing here. You see, when we go back to study how the King James Bible was developed, we realize that King James commissioned the scholars to translate it, but he had a specific motive. He had a specific reason for having that translation, having the King James Bible being developed. His country was at war during that period. People were losing their lives. His country was divided. They were killing each other. He wanted a Bible that would unite his people, unite the church in his country. Now, picture the setting. The, the Church of England had now separated from the Roman church. The leaders in Rome now had been pushed away. And it was the king, King James, who was the head of the Church of England. As head of the Church of England, he needed a Bible to unite his people. And here's why it was so important. At that time in history, the most commonly read Bible in England was another version was, which had been developed by John Calvin, another leader. John Calvin, at that time, he developed what's called the Geneva Bible. But in the margins, John Calvin had put notes, his interpretational notes. And some of those notes justified rebellion to the kings, justified rebellions to authority. They also, he interpreted the Geneva Bible in a way that reinforced his own theology. He was known to believe strongly in predestination, so he actually overemphasized predestination, overemphasized the wickedness of humanity, things that were self-supported of his own theology. That was the most commonly read Bible in England at the time that King James was now the head of England. He needed to unite his people. He didn't want his people reading a Bible that justifies rebellion to the king. What he wanted was something to unite his kingdom, unite his people, and he wanted the institutional church to be a part of that union. So he commissioned some scholars. Now, when King James commissioned these scholars, he gave them 15 guidelines that they needed to follow. Now, these guidelines, I list them in the book here, the 15 guidelines, but you can, they're common public knowledge. You can go online and find them yourself. But these guidelines, when you don't know the history, you read them, they seem quite innocent. But when you know the historical setting, suddenly you realize what was his motive. For example, I'm just read one guideline. The third guideline, the old ecclesiastical words to be kept. This is the word church, not to be translated as congregation. Okay, so here King James, I'm quoting that which he had written to the scholars. The old ecclesiastical words, that's the old church words, the, the words that reinforce the institutions. You use those words. And then he gives an example like church rather than congregation. See, in the original Greek language, which our New Testament was written, often it'll refer to the congregation, referring to the people. But the king says, no, you use the word church there. Why? I want you to interpret that word church. Why? We can see his motive behind. So also with all 15 of these guidelines. He wanted a book that the people would read to support that which had his goals in mind. Um, not only institutional church, but a type of church structure that was um, supportive of his rulership, his authority. Therefore, words were interpreted. For example, like in Hebrews 13, where it says, honor those who oversee you. The King James says, honor those who rule over you. The word rule over is a lot more strong-handed than oversee. The original language, the original Bible says oversee, but King James wanted the translators to use words like rule over rather than oversee. Now, there are many of these that have been inserted in the King James Bible. Now, I'm sorry again if the King James Bible is the Bible God spoken to you. I want to reinforce God has used the King James Bible. He's spoken to millions of people through it. Um, I, and I don't want you to throw it away. I simply want you to open up. I simply want to be wise. Truth cannot put you in bondage. If indeed I'm presenting truth, you're going to get some clarity of thought. You're going to realize that 
that the King James Bible has been used to form a certain form of Christianity that's a little too heavy-handed. It's too institutionalized, and it's not quite what the originals were inspired by God to say. See, we believe that God inspired the original writers. If what was changed in translation from what the original writer says, then we no longer have truth. Truth sets us free. If we no longer have truth, then we're not having freedom. And that's what I want to propose to you. Now, I give the ex explanation on how the King James Bible was developed. Real briefly, I give you in the textbook how the six manuscripts that were developed in the 12th century, six manuscripts were compiled together. The six Greek manuscripts, those were used to develop the King James Bible. Well, they were developed in the 12th century. Today, we have over 4,000 Greek manuscripts, not just six. When a modern Bible translation is produced, they're not just accessing six that were that were developed in the 12th century, they're going back to the early centuries and there's 4,000 plus manuscripts. Today there's no question about what is actually in the original writing. At the time of King James' life, there was. They didn't have such early manuscripts. So I talk about that. We explain why they are more accurate. We give an explanation of how in King James' time, they did not even have a grasp of the Greek language that the New Testament was written in. Today, with well over 4,000 manuscripts of the Bible and thousands and thousands of manuscripts of other writings of the 1st and 2nd century, uh, scholars today, they know the Greek, and in particular, the tenses of verbs. That has made a huge difference in modern translations. Modern translations have much more accuracy in the verb tenses. Now, that may sound like a, a simple thing, and you might just discard it as unimportant, but to someone who's really looking for truth, especially teachers, who want to know what a verse actually says, it makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference. And so I give some of those examples of verb tenses in the King James Bible, how they were mistranslated from the original. I start talking also about various mistranslations like the King James Bible. It interprets the word Hades as hell. Might sound something simple to you, but the implications are profound. And Christians who have been raised in the King James Bible do not realize it, but they are under a, more of an influence of the, the Middle Ages worldview. See, King James and England was coming out of the Middle Ages. The, the, the worldview of the Middle Ages was much more of a God fighting Satan, a world filled with demons, and God warring against these demons. That was the worldview of that time. King James was coming out of that, his, his people and the translators. And it's reflected in the translation of the King James Version, a Bible worldview, a worldview that was not entirely biblical. That's what I want to caution you about. And I, I explain that real briefly throughout this book. It's a very easy read. You can sit down with it in a half hour, get through it. But again, if you're a Christian who's been raised on the King James Bible, it might challenge you. It will challenge you. And I, you know, I, I need to challenge you. You need to be open to be challenged because truth sets us free, even when it changes something we're doing. If you're going to a church where everybody else in the church reads the King James, you might want to keep this in a brown paper bag. Um, but I want to recommend you, there's some more truth available. And anywhere you can get truth, there's more freedom. Living and dying with the King James Bible. A lot of people have gotten their life from it, but a lot of people are dying by certain elements that were not translated accurately. Please consider it. Living and dying with the King James Bible. You will be blessed.